I didn't actually understand how extraordinary the workshop was until I came to a workshop this past winter and we read the poems of the bridge poets, we read my poems, we had an amazing poetry discussion. I mean, as a poet, I sit in on a lot of workshops and make a lot of presentations. This was one of the handful of the best experiences I've ever had in 20 or 30 years. I'm old, unfortunately. Um, uh, the, the, the conversation was so vital and genuine and thought-provoking. And I felt like everybody understood that we were all playing in the words of a great poet, Robert Frost, for mortal stakes. And as a matter of fact, somebody in the workshop said that poetry for her was a lifeline. And I can tell you, for every serious poet, poet poetry is a lifeline. I wish I could have written down everything they said that day, but Pat has collected a few comments made over the years, and I'm going to read them. Um, Teresa O'Sullivan said, we draft our structures and we live by them. Mm. Michael Leidich said, sometimes I feel like a copy machine somebody gave bad documents to. <laughs> God, I have days like that. Um, Sabrina Mason said, 42 push-ups for the brain. That's poetry. <laughs> then you have to turn around, this is my just commentary, and do 42 push-ups more. Um, Patrick McIntosh said, poetry tells you a story to live on. Ira Brewer said, my poetry is about obstacles on the lanes to paradise. Few, if any, poets prosper. It's like selling sand to Egypt. <laughs> I've got to post that one on Facebook. Um, Antonio Myers said, a poem is like a poet's nickname. You can never miss who they are. Poetry is a healing process, a dosage, a medicine. A good poem always leaves you wanting more. That's what Charlene Donnelly said. Better than Thorazine. <laughs> and to end, I'm going to say something that Canada Neely said. Poetry is the electric sound of your well-being, a let-go statement of life. It captures your mind and takes you places you've never been before. And I think those of you who don't know the Bridge Poets' work will see that they do that today. Thank you. The poem that I'm going to read, which is called The Coat. The inspiration for this poem was that the group was meeting somebody kind of threw their coat on the table and it was just sitting there and people looked at this coat sitting on the table and began to talk about uh, what its meaning could be. Why you forgot your coat? Dark secretive note tossed with defiance on the long white table, shadow with its own shape, body of land the spirit left there to lean on, at rest in its own self-image. <coughs> Poor coat, can't mend or fend for itself, no eye for beauty, no nose for fragments, mindless, but hey, I'm not sure what a mind is for, are you? You wait for the wearer to travel with you on the way out. You ought to belong to someone, someone grateful for such a coat. Instead, you lay, spread eagle on the table, innards exposed, not even a fur. <laughs> Coat, you could hide the inner me, security blanket for the heart and lungs, zippers and pockets to keep secrets in. I imagine you made by a man, just like the one my father gave me. He wore it only on Sundays. I had a feeling it was going to feel warm, and it did. Warm coat, warm coat. You are all I need, all I need indeed, indeed. 
Command it to rise, and it will, feathered and full as a majestic bird, restored, no longer an old faded image of myself, blessed coat, I'd wrap you round me and we'll fly off to somewheresville. <laughs> Shadow, cloth coat, windblown or thrown, awaiting the next moment. Content to be here like a cloud, a hill, the warm sun. Oh. Two workshop have embarked on a journey they're eager to share with you. A group poem entitled Night Work, composed of many voices, 32 at last count, <laughs> with the urban night as our uncanny, shape-shifting muse. The poets craft their individual lines, then it's like a deck of cards we stacked and deal around the workshop table and then read out in turn. The astonishing thing, and I may add frustrating, thing about this exercise is that with each go round a new poem is born. So imagine how impossible it is to settle on which variation to present to you today. Catherine, you know how impossible this has been for me. <laughs> uh, and in its experience is best described by one of our poet players, Canada Neely, as a mental morphosis. <laughs> And who knows, we might be breaking new grounds with this exercise, but in any event, we're surprising ourselves, which is the important thing. Okay, first of all, I love this poem, and I think it's extraordinary, and I'm very inspired by all the work and the words that I've read that you guys have created. Um, so this is my work. <coughs> Pat also added a little quote by Theodore Redke, in a dark time the eye begins to see. Uh, Night rules, the moon outlaws the sun. Shapeshifters come out to dance and play. Stars dress up to fly across the curtain of the sky. Space dream flyers rise to the surface. Darkness reaches deep within. The window holds the shadow of my exit. I look out and know there is something beyond my barricade. A soft glow on the street below, the one-way sign is doubled. The bridge's cross-hatched beams loom like a giant fishnet to catch the night. Bridge of night, rich with paths to other paths. Is paradise only a train stop away? Night calls, the cyclist pedals, casting quick shadows, tree boughs calling each to each, calling home, 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 a place that feels so far away. Night, day, which one will stay? Sun, moon, who invented this treason? What's needful feeds on fleeting horizons, clips by in the night sky. The usual suspects running all over, staggering into taverns, drowning their sorrows, drowning their pain, displaced from somewhere, somewhere they can't name. Do I remain in this club with its roaring sound or find a bucolic cottage in the woods, lost in prayer, listening to God. Street lights cast shadows of things not there. I too am not here or there. Some trick of the moon. Moonlight is the shadow's mirror. Leaves reflect on the grilled windows. The shadow of man plates the pavement. Stone steps, stark and eerie lead to a door that no one enters. Moonlight is the shadow's mirror. The old man walks aimlessly into the night. His shadow slips closer and closer. Then it's gone. With no bed to lie on, he must make his way through the dark alone. 
O sky of promise, windy gray with pleasure and dream, carry me away. <coughs> Capture my essence. Feel my intensity. I dream, scream, sweat, fly. I am a night bird. God loves me. Moon dust finds me on the horizon. It's summer. Ocean waves tossing, turning, inviting me in. With water and skin to clothe me. I'm not naked. I'm fully me. In my dreams, I am brilliant. I win wars, save the world. A humbling experience to wake and be me. In this sad world, I can do nothing about anything. Life grinds on. Tomorrow comes just the same. The distant wind cries for its mother. Each smiling full stomach strikes and burns those who starve. Waiting for dawn, I watch the field of emptiness and feel the despair of a journey that lingers forever. Is this the life of survival? Can this emptiness fill with purpose? O oh, night, I am so afraid. Make me unto a saint. Make me easily appeased. Deliver me from the voices of foes and their houndings.